Hello everyone and welcome back to Red Embrace Hollywood. In the last part, I was checking out a few things with audio. I reverted back to how I used to do audio, but I'm using two tracks now. I completely forgot that OBS did this and if it's so much it's gonna be so much easier for me to do it this way than the way I was doing it before. Um if you want to play Red Embrace Hollywood on your own, uh, there will be links to buy it in the description. And if you want to support the devs, there's also a link to the Patreon. If you're just randomly landed on this video, please play the first one. Here is a playlist right at the information I thing. I don't even know what it's called. Back into the game. The next night there was no sign of a message from Charisse. Nothing from Randall, either. For once, then, I had a completely free night. Still, despite my immortal lifespan, I felt like I probably shouldn't lazy around in bed or watch the entire VHS collection of the... of the French Prince of Bel-Air that, for some reason, was tucked into my TV cabinet. <laughs> Instead, something much stronger was tempting me. A meeting with the Golgotha leader. Oh boy, I was so, I'm so excited for this. I felt a strange, insisting pull towards him, towards the cemetery. It was like an unseen will tangling with my own. My gut feeling told me I'd be safe. If he'd really wanted to kill me or capture me, I'd already given him plenty of chances. But before I went to meet him, I needed a feat again. Wrenching somewhere potentially dangerous without fresh blood seemed like a bad idea. Mm. Drink from David- Did I drink from a blood bag last time or did I drink from a human last time? Shit! I think it was a blood bag last time, so let's go for a human. That's not David. I quickly pulled on my clothes, hurrying outside. Once I left the hotel, I immediately caught the scent of a lone human in the side street nearby. A perfect target. Too absorbed in his thoughts, the man didn't even notice me until I'd bitten him from behind. I drank just enough to sate myself, leaving him in a pleasant daze on the edge of consciousness. Adventure! Because Holyfield Cemetery was a little too far to walk, I held a cab and settled down in my seat, gazing out of, gazing out at the distant moon. Living in a graveyard was an interesting choice, even for a vampire. The irony had to be deliberate. The irony had to be deliberate. It shouldn't have been that strange, since we were all dead, clinically speaking. But most vampires didn't seem to flaunt this fact. The entrance to the cemetery almost looked like it belonged to a mansion. I reached out to testingly push the elegant towering iron gates, wondering if they were locked. But they loudly creaked open at the first hint of a touch, all too eager to beckon me inside. With some hesitation, I stepped onto the little path that wound through a maze of graves. It was dark, almost unnaturally dark, and a thin mist curled sluggishly among the headstones. I really like this background. Oh, it's so good. Ugh. I couldn't deny the cemetery's haunting beauty. The watchful statues, the towering trees, the rigid lamps that cast an eerie sheen on whatever they struck. Everything seemed preserved in time. Far in the distance, I saw the city lights glowing brightly, like electric fireflies drifting through the darkness. My eyes fell from glittering skyscrapers down to the cold gray tombstone surrounding me. The atmosphere of graveyards like this made me feel nervous, intrigued, enthralled. Nothing. Like at this time of night? At this time of night. But at the same time I know I'm a predator, so at the same time I'm not. Antonio isn't that nervous, maybe? Nervous! Nervous. Maybe intrigued. Intrigued? Intrigued. 
The dead kept many secrets, and it was like those secrets had stuck into the soil, filling the ground with their dark, macabre presence. It was one of those mysteries you never really solved, a constant unknown. And for that very reason, I was fascinated. That is very true for how I feel for cemeteries in general. <laughs> Following the path, I headed deeper into the graveyard, forcing myself to stay on high alert. Everyone seemed either terrified of this man or reluctant to even speak his name. Considering the power and confidence of most vampires I've met so far, that was no small feat. But after wandering around for several minutes, I couldn't find anyone. Maybe I'd missed him, or else Zhang had pulled some kind of prank on me. There wasn't exactly a doorbell I could ring either. Suddenly I sensed the presence of someone nearby. Like Marcus, it had abruptly appeared instead of slowly growing closer. My eyes darted around to try and spot the source, but I couldn't detect where they were. Until I glanced behind the mausoleum. There, a lone statu statuesque figure stood with his back to me, gazing up at the moon. The instant I saw him, a chill ran down my spine for reasons I couldn't explain. Something about his presence was incredibly calm and controlled, almost too calm, completely unlike any other human or vampire I'd met. Hello? Or say nothing and wait. Hello? My voice came out thin and uncertain, nearly carried away by the breeze. But it seemed to reach the man, who slowly turned to face me. Oh, hello! His eyes dimly glowed like two beacons in the dark, casting a pale golden sheen onto his face. The figure took a few steps towards me. Maybe the wind drowned them out, but I could have sworn his footsteps in the grass were silent. He stopped a small distance away, gazing me up and down with an of curiosity. Oh, he squint. At last, with a soft inhale, he subtly nodded, maybe to himself more than to me. Welcome to my residence, Antonio. Oh my god, that little head tilt? Fucking killed me. <laughs> I hope its unorthodox nature does not cause you undue distress. He spoke in a quiet, near monotone, his deep voice oddly soothing. I am Andre. Andre Zabek. Zabek? Ooh. Freaking rip me with names. <laughs> Andre, as the Golgotha leader. I guess you're the one who sent the par party invitation, huh? Andre, are you the Golgotha leader? The corners of his mouth curled faintly inward at my reply, yet it didn't seem quite like a smile. It appears my message was delivered. I am pleased you decided to acknowledge it. Only on rare occasions do I extend personal readings to Los Angeles' latest introductions, but for you, I chose to make an exception. And why might that be? Or everyone seems to be making exceptions for me. It's not that, it's because they're- I'm pretty sure like people are waiting to see what I do. And it's why no one really has done anything to like stop me or stuff. And why might that be? The glow of Andre's eyes flickered for less than a second, like a lamp rushed by a poltergeist. There are, on occasion, individuals of unique potential and circumstances who are noteworthy enough to attract my interest. Very few vampires have been turned in Los Angeles the past several years, and have managed to survive. Yet you appear to flourish. As nascent as you are in your development, I feel as if you hold great promise. It's a cold, isolating existence, but it's also exciting. I like it. Or, well, I managed to survive at least. <laughs> That's more of my tide. Well, I'm managing to survive at least. Ah, the most enduring struggle of all. It was impossible to tell from his deadpan expression whether he was being truly sympathetic or not. I'm aware of your employee by Sharice Locke, the Iskari leader in the region of Los Angeles. Her methodology of ruling is disagreeable to me. That is why I seek to sub subvert it, and why I rally others against her. But she is a formidable opponent. While the, uh, while the Mavar seek to fight in the streets, Locke and I battle in the shadows, a duel of assassins and spies. 
well, that's, I guess that's true, then. Vera. A faint, insidious smile spread across his lips, not quite reaching his eyes. Uh, my head hurts already. I'm like, oh my god, I just got back to a new part. Can we not do this? However, as of late, she has begun losing ground to me. I believe that is why, in her desperation, she seeks to mold you into a suitable weapon. Fuck. <laughs> I don't want that. That might be true. But I have faith in Charisse and her cause, or that's what it feels like. She's trying to use me as a pawn, or I'm just doing what I have to. My situation isn't exactly flexible, or no offense, but I'm pretty sure I trust her more than you. I'm just doing what I have to. My situation is exa <laughs> my situation isn't exactly flexible. There is nothing one is forced to do, save for abiding, save for abiding by the natural laws of the universe. Beyond those laws, your will is entirely your own. You are merely deceiving yourself into seeing another's will as an impossible barrier, when in reality it is nothing but a circle of a thread on the floor around you. Hmm. That is a good perspective. Such a barrier exists solely because you believe it does. Oh man. That means I could break free from Charisse and go my way! <laughs> is that what you're telling me? His quiet, calm voice drifted into silence. Andre turned his gaze up towards the moon. The time for an end to this conflict swiftly approaches, Antonio. Either a new ruler will establish domain over Los Angeles' coven, or else we shall descend into anarchy, the beginning of the inevitable end of our kind. It sounded remarkably placid for such a dramatic statement. Even when I studied his face, I couldn't see any visible traces of emotion. My assistants serve as my eyes and ears, unseen and unheard, absorbing all that would be hidden as they move among the dead. But with current tensions between the houses, the range is limited. God, I like his outfit. I like his everything going on. Andre fell purposefully silent, allowing his thin smile to finish his implication. Are you asking me to be your spy, or are I'm already technically spying for Randall? Or, well, maybe I could help with that. Are you asking me to be your spy? To a minor extent, yes. Unlike your arrangement with the Iskari, in my way, you will be treated fairly and with due respect. Join me and I can promise you an elevated seat in the new government I intend to establish. Fuck! Randall doesn't- no! No government, apparently. Why did I choose Randall for this route? New government? What does that mean? Or, alright, I'm interested in working together, or Thanks for the offer, but I can't join you. New government? What does that mean? Forgive me, but I cannot disclose the entirety of my design while you are still in Locke's service. I will, however, inform you that our ambitions are entirely different. She desires to maintain the status quo of secrecy and state stasis, while I wish for our kind to reach a certain understanding with mortals. It is inevitable that, as technology advances, vampires will one day be exposed. I seek to prevent the unfortunate circumstances that would arise from such a scenario. Does that provide you with more insight? A little yes. Actually, I'm more confused now. <laughs> A little yes. Excellent, I hope it assists you in making your decision. Do I have to give you an answer now, or- Alright, I'll work with you, or thanks for that, but I can't join you. Do I have to give you an answer now? I'm afraid so. It is a sudden decision, so I do understand your trepidation, but I would ask that you follow your instincts on in this regard. I don't want to join you, that's my instincts. <laughs> Those whose hearts and minds are prone to wavering often make unreliable allies. Thanks for the offer, but I can't join you. I see. How unfortunate. God. Andre's tone remains. Ooh. Andre's tone remained flat, but his brows twitched slightly. But nonetheless, I respect your decision, thank you. <laughs> Perhaps our paths may one day cross again, although it seems unlikely. You won't let me come back here. Or, fair enough, or, I'm completely fine with that. Fair enough, you won't l let me come back here. <laughs> it is inadvisable for you to do so. Those who card this resting place are swift to set upon vampires not judged as allies or without explicit invitation to enter. 
He stared at me in increasingly uncomfortable silence that followed, unsmiling and unblinking. I wish you luck in the rest of your eternal struggle, Antonio. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Take care. Don't die. <laughs> I don't need anyone dying. <laughs> After Andre's polite dismissal, I left the mausoleum behind, heading back down the empty path. All the way back to the graveyard's entrance. I couldn't shake the strange feeling of presence surrounding me. But they were too muddled to really identify. Man, I can't wait until I do do a route where I do side with them. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Luckily, I managed to catch a passing taxi not far from the cemetery. By the time we drove back into Hollywood, Sunrise was still several hours away. Something about the graveyard had left me feeling restless, so I decided to pay a visit somewhere. Oh, shit. Wait, I could visit the abattoir? <laughs> uh, let's go to the beach house. Let's tell him... stuff, I guess. <laughs> I had my rubber day- I can't speak. I had my driver take me to Santa Monica, deciding to stop by Randall's place. There was a small crowd here tonight, enjoying themselves over drinks. But no sign of Randall. Fuck! Chat with them a bar, look around for someone interesting. Chat with them a bar. When I glanced around at the gathering of Mavar, it seemed like most of them were in a single group, sharing stories about their eventful lun lives. Wandering up to the circle, I decided to join in the storytelling or stay quiet and listen. <laughs> this could go either way. Do I want to join in the storytelling? <laughs> the Mavar's histories were interesting enough to listen to, ranging from addicts to runaways to average peoples whose lives have suddenly turned upside down. Most of the tales involved a watershed moment where they heard about Randall or his clan, which always caused a loud chorus of cheers or warm shouting of encouragement. Before long, someone asked me to tell a story of my own, so I began to talk about Randall the Hunters, my own story, Randall and the Hunters. As I described the tense moment when Randall and I were huddled in the alley, unsure whether the Hunters would discover us or not. I saw a sea of assassination and mitering gazes focused on me, drinking in every word. By the time I finished, a number of Mavar stepped up over to hug me, thanking me for coming with them that night. Oh. Shut up. I can't believe that's the thing that happens. After a little while longer in the circle, I finally stepped away, leaving them to their chatter and laughter. Look around for someone interesting. I shifted towards one of the groups, trying to find an opening in the conversation. They didn't seem to notice me at all, though, and I found myself standing somewhat awkwardly in the corner. Hi there, could I speak to you for a moment? Just then, a soft, pleasant voice called out behind me. Oh my goodness, who are you? Oh my goodness, you're pretty! Oh no! Oh no, I've been attacked. I turned to see a short girl studying me with a serious look, her eyes keenly peering into my face. Ah, I was right. You're Antonio, aren't you? That- that's me. Yes, the one and only. Antonio, who's that? Sorry, wrong person. That's me, yes. Cool, I was right then. Good, I was right then. I read that wrong. My fault. My name is Evelyn. Evelyn Marlowe. I'm a journalist doing a report on the conditions here. I heard you were the intriguing new face in town, so I was wondering if I could ask you a couple of questions. Shouldn't take long, I think. Would that be alright? Questions about what? Well, let me explain. She twirled a pencil in her left hand, her eyes keenly watching my face. I'm not actually a member of LA's coven, you see, though I am a Mavar. I come from London. I'm not gonna give you an accent, girl. <laughs> Where I'm something of an activist. I'm visiting to research the conditions in the city. From the way Evelyn wrinkled her nose at, at conditions, I could tell she didn't find them too appealing. Since you're more of a newcomer to LA and our lifestyle, I thought you'd have some interesting thoughts to share. Uh -huh. Let's see here. She thoughtfully plucked at the front of her loose shirt with one hand, fiddling with a small notebook in the other. It seems Randall and his clan are mostly in favor of total anarchy. No plans for a new system of government if they overthrow Charisse. This is complicated, girl. What are your thoughts on a chaotic situation like that, Antonio? 
It's pretty short-sighted. Peace won't last for long with anarchy. Or, I think it could work if Randall's overseeing things, or we can implement laws later if we need them, or you can't cover govern vampires like you can humans. They have to rule themselves. Oh, this is so complicated. Ah, uh, this is the only one that's like closer to what I, th I want to say. <laughs> Uh, we can implement laws later if we need them. Uh, don't talk to me, girl. <laughs> I'm having pink thoughts. Uh, you can't cover vampires like you can humans. They have to rule themselves. Oh? You know, I heard a similar philosophy a couple of centuries ago in France. It resulted in a lot of unpleasant situations. We gotta learn from that. Evelyn gave me a long look, her words hanging pointedly in the air for several moments. There's another concerning subject I wanted to ask about, too. You're aware of Randall's view on our relationship with humans, right? He doesn't encourage killing or harming them, but he also won't allow any rules that prohibit those things. I feel like I should go back. I don't know. I feel very confused right now with my opinions on things. Hey, this is Reyes from a few days after recording this. I was really not in the mindset. I haven't been out for a few weeks. Um, I went outside now. I feel much better. Go outside, kids. Your mental health is important. Do you have an opinion on how humans should be treated, Antonio? I do think we need rules to protect humans from our kind. Fuck. That makes me happy to hear. So few vampires in the city have any sense of duty to humanity left. If I'm not wrong, Cherise has some laws against hurting humans, but a lot of her other policies seem unpopular. What are your thoughts on her? Oh, I didn't think I was going to get interviewed. <laughs> to be honest, I think she's the best choice for a leader, though. I, I do agree with some of what she says. I do agree with some of what she says, but not all of it. Hmm, she seems to care more about mortals than, other, than the other two leaders, that's for sure. She let a sigh somewhat between a faint smile and a grimace crossing her lips. You seem to have a pretty strong opinion of those things yourself, Evelyn. I do. Like I said, I'm an activist in London, but I don't concern myself with our coven. I don't care much at all about vampire society. It's just a mess of parasites trying to one-up each other, leeching off humanity whenever they can. I'm much more concerned with human society, helping them improve themselves, and keeping vampires from meddling where they don't belong. She sounded quite determined, a fiery spark flashing in her eyes as she spoke. Well, that's all I wanted to ask you, Antonio. Uh, but if you're ever around London, you should come find me in my group. Reaching into her pocket, she pulled out a small pamphlet offering it out to me. Along with our little news circulation, we also tried to help less, less fortunate humans in the city and all over the world. Numbers on there, so once the city so once the city's kerfuffle dies down, give me a ring if you're interested in helping out. Mm, well, I'll think about it. Fair enough, just remember what causes are really worth fighting for. Ah, oh, fuck me and my choices. With that, Evelyn turned away, filling with her notebook as she approached a different vampire. I hate my choices. <laughs> Should I guess second guess myself? That's what gets me bad endings. Okay, I'm good. Slipping out of the beach house, I made my way back towards the sand. I'd spend time at the hotel? Wait, I want to spend time at the hotel. I wonder what that would get me. Do I get to talk with Charisse? Is she in town? I wonder what spending at the time hotel is. Let's go. If it ends up being like, oh, you finished the night, I'll fucking stab someone. <laughs> there are a few groups of Iskari clustered in the lobby tonight, engaging in quiet conversations, occasionally sprinkled with laughter. They seem preoccupied with their own chatter. But I spotted another, more unusual pair sitting nearby. One of Charisse's agents, and a human. Wonder of the agent. Go talk with David! Ugh. Oh, forget the agent! We're gonna go talk to David! I haven't done that! Jesus. I called David into my room, and within a few minutes, he showed up at the door. Oh, whoa. Hi, Antonio. Did you want to talk to me? You know what would really suit you? A caller. Tell me about yourself. 
how does your relationship feel to you right now? Or tell me like You want to know about me? He stared at me slack jawed, apparently floored by my question. Well, what about you? I mean there's nothing special about me. I'm not some amazing important person like you. I'm not important though. I'm being dragged around like pawn. <laughs> But, um, I have a brother who's way too protected of me, and a dad with a bunch of money. My mom used to be a model. When she got too old, she had to retire, so now she stays home and watches some shows most of the time. I just finished high school. You're such a bleeby! I just finished high school, but I wasn't planning to go to college or anything, especially since I got held back a few years. Oh, maybe I'm not a baby. <laughs> My dad says it'd be a waste of money, and I to just work with his magazine instead. Is that what you really want to do? Work for your dad? Or you shouldn't listen to him. <clears throat> Is that what you really want to do? Work for your dad? Actually, uh, I'm not sure what I want to do. <laughs> Nothing seems like it's worth it, I guess. It just takes so much time and money to get anywhere. And who knows what you're supposed to do when you get there. But I don't care about that stuff anymore. I mean, it's not important. I'm here for you now, right? For you to drink from. I'm happy to drink over here, though. It's a really nice feeling. I don't need anything else. Oh boy! <laughs> what did you do before you met me? Um, well, I hang around at the office for my dad's magazine. The photographers were younger, closer to my age, so we kind of got along. They talked behind my back a lot, because my dad was the boss and all, and I was gonna get a job just because I was his son. But I didn't really have any other friends, so I followed them around, I guess. When I was alone, I just watched a lot of TV and went to arcades mostly. Oh, my bad boy. Saying that probably makes me sound pretty lame, but it feels like I can be honest with you, Antonio. And I'm glad we can be together. You're taking this whole vampire exist thing pretty well. I am? I guess I am. I don't know, I always thought they sounded kinda cool. And after you bit me and I woke up from it, I was like, it was just amazing. Plenty of weird things happen all the time, so vampires existing didn't seem that strange. I wasn't scared by it. I'm used to dealing with whatever happens. No, it would really suit you a caller. How does our relationship feel to you right now? Our relation? Uh huh, that's a funny question. I mean, I think it's pretty great. I don't mind staying in the hotel, they gave me everything I want here. And you, you're like, like my... Well, you're Antonio. <laughs> Thanks, David. You're too sweet for your own good, David. You don't think of me of your lover. What does that mean? You're too sweet for your own good, David. <laughs> uh, do you mean me or my blood? You. Both right. I hope so. <laughs> Stop it. That's all for now. Thanks. Bye. I'm not giving you a car. I can't do it. Okay, thanks for talking with me, Antonio. Bye, my boy. Please drink from me again soon. Oh, God. Fucking Jesus Christ. <laughs> He returned to his room with a warm smile on his face, glancing back at me before closing his door. Just as I stepped back inside my room, at that moment an action, anxious knocking echoed from nearby. What is this? But it wasn't at the door. What? It was coming from the window. Hell, what? <laughs> as a face peering in at me was... Randall's? Randall? What's happening? <laughs> What's, what's going what's going on? He seemed to be shouting something, pounding his knuckles on the thick glass. Hello, I can't hear you, huh? Swallowing my astonishment, I rushed over to let him inside. What what are you doing? Ew, thanks, newbie. What are you doing scaling a hotel? What? After clumbering inside somewhat ungracefully, Randall brushed back his windswept hair and offered me a bright grin. <clears throat> well, before you even start, I know what you're thinking. I was doing just fine out there until the wind decided to pick up, and I had one of those oh shit, how to get into this situation <laughs> moments. Damn, why'd they decide to put you so high up? It's like Queen Bee is really trying to lock you away in a tower. Christ. He grumbled under his breath, but I could tell he was enjoying himself. You could have gotten hurt. What were you thinking? How did you get up here in the first place? Or ignore the fact that you almost died. This is sort of romantic. <laughs> How did you get up here in the first place? <laughs> Listen, don't sweat the details. That's not important. 
I'm here now and that's a bigger problem for you to worry about. That is true. Really though, why'd you risk coming here in person? I'm not complaining. I wish you'd spontaneous <laughs> spontaneously appear more often. Mm, I'm not gonna lie, that's true. <laughs> well, you know what? Really though, why'd you come why'd you risk coming here in person? <laughs> Randall paused, scratching at his beard. It looked like he was trying to hide a smile, but gave up halfway through. Did you just want to see me? <laughs> Actually, clearing his throat, Randall paused for a moment, gazing at me fondly. I just came to invite you to do something fun tomorrow. Ooh. Thought about just calling you up, but uh, hell. It was a good excuse to see your face again. Oh. I guess you take the phrase drop in on someone quite literally. You don't need an excuse to f see my face, you know. Or only my face? That makes the rest of me sad. Or that's pretty silly considering you could have died. You don't need an excuse to see my face, you know. Sure, but I wanted some kind of reason. Just so it wouldn't just seem like I was sleezing my way into your hotel room. <laughs> Not that I'm above that sort of thing, but I like to try and keep appearances sometimes. Randall offered an instant shrug as- or at least an attempt match one. Anyway, I was being serious about you coming along with me. Tomorrow? See, there's this band. The Alchemical Men. Up-and-coming rock stars. They're getting pretty famous. Their frontman is this crazy guy who calls himself Cadman? Or a stage name. His real name is a something boring as hell like Adam. So I guess he decided to switch it up. Now, tomorrow night, they're secretly filming a music video on some out-of-the-way road in LA. Have you ever seen a big time video being shot before? It's a shit show, let me tell you. But it's fun as hell to watch. Is this part of my mentoring? <laughs> or it sounds like fun to me. I'll come along, sure. There you go, kid. We're gonna have a blast. Randall grinned warmly at me, not attempting to hide his delight. Alright, now that we've gotten that all straight out, one more question before I figure out how the hell to get out of here. <laughs> Anything happened to you recently? Any stuff with Queen Bee, Super Plans, or some shit? Or anything just plain weird? He lowered his voice conspiratorially, but he still sounded playful, as if he didn't really expect me to say anything important. Yes, actually, I met a man named Andre. <laughs> no, just the usual daily struggles of being the. No. Uh, yes, actually, I met a man named Andre. You look angry. <laughs> <laughs> the second I mentioned Andre's name, Randall flinched slightly. Andre is... He really creeps me out, that guy. I don't know why. I mean, beyond the fact that he lives in a fucking graveyard and wears some... kind of wizard coat. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's a cool coat. <laughs> he lets out a snort, but the faint humor left his gaze almost right after. I like him, actually. Or, he gave me a bad feeling to her. I don't have much of an opinion on it. I don't have much of an opinion on him. He's pretty secretive. He is, and that's a damn good reason not to trust him. Who knows what he could be planning. Wondering under his breath, Randall almost seemed to be talking to himself more than me. Judging from Andre's similar but much more subtle reaction to Randall's name earlier, it seemed like these two had something strange between them. Well, listen, Antonio. All I'm gonna say is, you should remember that guy's a goal, even if he acts all smart and calm. And a lot of goals do scary shit. And if you want to take my advice, stay the hell away from him. Is there a reason talking about Andre upsets you so much? He finally shook his head, letting out a sheepish sounding sigh. Nah, it's nothing beyond him being a creepy bastard. Fair. <laughs> And I don't want him to try and brainwash you or anything. You might end up in some kind of cult. <laughs> I'd say don't drink the Kool-Aid, but it really looks like blood, so uh, just be careful. Oh my god. Hey, listen. Much as I hate to say it, I should probably get going before they notice all the broken windows and knocked out guards. Randall! <laughs> he winked at me and I wasn't sure if he... If his last move <laughs> He winked at me and I wasn't sure if his last remark was serious or not. My guys are actually waiting for me down there too. I brought some of them along to help out. Call it a field trip. 
Pausing, Randall grabbed a notepad from my nightstand, pulling out his pen and scribbling something down. From the lines and arrows, it looked like a map. Here, let's meet on the rooftop of this old building. I'll have a great view of all the rock star carnage. Your ass better show there tomorrow, or I'm gonna be real disappointed. Literally or figuratively. <laughs> or, I wouldn't miss it for my life, well, what's left of it. Or, I'll try as long as I'm not being sent down any missions. Literally or figuratively? <laughs> like, do you want just my ass to show up there? <laughs> Is that what that question means? <laughs> uh, I'll try, as long as I'm not being sent on many missions. Missions, huh? The distaste in his voice was obvious, but he put on a smile anyway. Well, if you are, guess I'll track you down and kidnap you for the night. Queen Bee will ha just have to wait. Aww. Please do. Rolling his eyes, he turned to take a step towards the window, but briefly glanced back at me. Mm-hmm. I'll see you tomorrow, Antonio. Bye, Randall. Can't you stay a little longer? Or Bye, Randall. Hey, be careful going down. <laughs> or wave. Can't you stay a little longer? I'd love to, but too much of a good thing and all. Glad to know I'm wanted, though. After giving me one final wink, he ducked through the window, grabbing a hold of the ledge. <sighs> but instead of climbing down, <laughs> Randall climbed up, crawling carefully along the windowsill until he disappeared around the side of the hotel. Okay. Probably better to go up than down. <laughs> I had no clue what his escape plan was, but I had a feeling he'd figure one out. Holy shit. Is that the night? Wow. <laughs> I ended my night there, with a sense of uncertainty lurking in the back of my mind. When I curled up and closed my eyes, I felt like I could see Andre's glowing gaze, his low voice resonating like a double bass. The time for an end to this conflict swiftly approaches, he'd said. <laughs> Those ominous words circled through my thoughts as I drifted into a light, restless sleep. God. What an eventful few nights. I don't even know. What the hell? Where the hell am I? <laughs> what? Who? Is this Mar is people talking about Marcus again? <laughs> I'm gonna stop there. Thanks guys for watching. Make sure to check out those links in the description for the game to support the devs. And I'll see you next part. Bye bye.